Hi everyone, welcome back to Frappe School. This is the 8th chapter of our Inventory Management course. In this chapter, we will be discussing returns. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to understand what is a purchase return, what is a sales return, and how to record purchase and sales returns in ERP Next. Goods delivered or received can be returned for various reasons. It can be due to poor quality, delayed delivery, or any other reason. Returns can be of two types, purchase return and sales return. In purchase return, you return the goods received from your supplier due to various reasons. Purchase return reduces your stock, which is reflected in the stock ledger, and reduces your liability to pay the supplier for the amount equivalent to the value of goods returned, which is reflected in the accounting ledger. The voucher or transactional document used to update the stock is called a purchase return, which is the same as purchase receipt, but with negative values. In the case of a sales return, your customer returns the goods previously sold to them. It therefore increases your stock and reduces the accrued amount to be collected from the customer which is reflected in the stock and accounting ledger respectively. The document used to update the stock is called as sales return which is the same as a delivery note but with negative values. Let us have a look on how to create returns in ERP next. A sold item when returned is called a sales return. These returns can be due to various reasons like quality issues, non-delivery on the agreed date or other problems. Let's see how to create sales returns in ERP next. First, let's go to the sales invoice list using the awesome bar. Here, we can either open a sales invoice for which we want to record a return or we can create a new one. Let's try creating a simple sales invoice. Once we save and submit the sales invoice, we will need to create a delivery note for this invoice. Once we create and save the delivery note, we can navigate to the create button on the top and click on sales return. This will create another delivery note where the return checkbox is selected. Items, rates and taxes will be added. If we want to return stock with a credit note, we can select the update stock checkbox in the return. Once we submit this return, the system will increase the stock's balance in the appropriate warehouse. To maintain correct stock valuation, stock balance will go up according to the original purchase rate of the returned items. We can also create the return directly from the sales invoice we just created. If we create it from an invoice, the customer's account will be credited and the associated income or tax account will be debited. Let's see how this looks in the accounting ledger. If perpetual inventory is enabled, then the system will also post an accounting entry against the appropriate warehouse to cinch the balance with the stock balance. On creating a sales return against a delivery note, the returned quantity in the original delivery note along with any sales order linked to it is updated. The original delivery note status is changed to return issued if 100% is returned. Similarly, we can also create purchase returns. Any purchased item being returned is known as a purchase return. A purchased item being returned is known as a purchase return. Using purchase returns, we can return products to the supplier. This may be due to various reasons like defects in good, quality not matching, the buyer not needing the stock, etc. Let's see how to create a purchase return. We will first need to create a purchase receipt. Let's go to the purchase receipt list and create a new purchase receipt with some basic details. Now 
Once we save and submit this purchase receipt, we can go to the create button and click on return. This will open a new purchase receipt with the return checkbox selected. Items, rates and taxes will be added as well. When we submit this return, the system will decrease item quantity from the appropriate warehouse. To maintain correct stock valuation, stock balance will also go up according to the original purchase rate of the returned items. We can see this in the stock ledger. In the accounting ledger, the stock in hand account will be credited and the stock received but not billed account will be debited. If perpetual inventory is enabled, the system will also post accounting entry against warehouse account to sync the warehouse account balance with stock balance as per stock ledger. When we create a purchase return against a purchase receipt, the returned quantity in the original purchase receipt along with any purchase order linked to it is updated. The original purchase receipt status is changed to return issued if 100% is returned. This brings us to the end of the 8th chapter of Inventory Management. I hope this helped you understand how to record sales and purchase returns effectively on ERP Next. You can learn more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss topics related to warehouse management. Thank you.